I want to uh, invite uh, Sergey Sparks. He's a software senior software engineer manager at Oracle. And um, Sergey, are you are you are you here? Uh, yes, I'm here. All right, cool. Uh, give you you can share your screen and let's get started. Thank you for joining. Actually, that's this is I'm very excited to see how it is in Oracle. <laughs> Same here. So let's start rolling. Uh, so hello everybody. And uh, today we are going to uh, discuss a slightly different perspective uh, about the uh, big uh, tech companies and uh, how to get hired there. And uh, the process is, uh, I would say, pretty similar for any position, uh, either is a automation or manual QA or developer or something else. Uh, and it will follow the same that we're going to discuss today. So let's uh, discuss uh, what is uh, Fungo, as some people on the West Coast uh, call it. It's a group of companies that uh, represents the big uh, technological companies uh, that uh, strive to get the best uh, talent uh, from the top uh, technical schools and uh, they also, um, I would say, share the same uh, hiring process, they share the same benefits and uh, usually uh, when you work in one company uh, almost entirely your experience, uh, like uh, month by month, year by year, can be transitioned to the new company uh, from like uh, this group. Uh, so uh, you would uh, be uh, interested like uh, what are the main uh, like technical hub areas. I would say that uh, for myself, I position uh, three areas as a Bay Area, San Francisco, Seattle and uh, Austin as a, a main uh, probably uh, trending hubs where we have a lot of uh, uh, talented uh, people graduating from universities and uh, where people are generally move for some one reason or another due to geography or some other opportunities. Uh, because uh, almost every company is present in this area, uh, therefore you're not going to be uh, like looking for the different compensation package or different uh, approach uh, between them because uh, every candidate uh, in our free country is uh, free to interview with uh, all like six companies or even interview in 10, 15 companies at the same time. And uh, obviously if your company is offering something less than expected on the market, you, wouldn't, uh, you are not going to get a lot of uh, talented people coming to you. So therefore uh, the salary uh, compensation and benefits are not driven uh, like particularly by the cost of living, but uh, uh, the main uh, driver, I would say, is uh, pressure from competition and how much talents do you have. If you have uh, more companies looking uh, that uh, talents are available, uh, the inflation uh, will reach the point when enough people will move into the area. And again, you will see repeated situation when every company is offering pretty much similar conditions. Uh, so in Oracle, uh, primarily, uh, we are high. Let me remove it. Uh, so in the Oracle, uh, primarily uh, we are hiring for the SDE, which is uh, Software Developer Engineers. Uh, it's very like a big umbrella term. And uh, in some projects, uh, people can be uh, doing a lot of, uh, like actually doing uh, algorithmic jobs. So they're designing uh, the things and they're making sure that uh, uh, the same task using your algorithm is working 3% faster than other algorithm or the current one. Or it can go all the way uh, on the other side when you are making sure that you are compliant with uh, some items. So let's say that uh, your uh, cloud provider is uh, introducing a new uh, government uh, realm or government environment where uh, some of the government clients uh, will be running their loads. And you need to make sure that it's uh, secure enough that you store your passwords in the uh, protected hardware areas and so on. So it's big umbrella term and uh, I would say not every SD is actually a developer. Uh, the uh, second most popular position, I would say, is a SRE, Site Reliability Engineers. So this is the people who are not uh, particularly coding from day-to-day -day activities, uh, but uh, they are mostly making sure that uh, uh, the things that the developers coded can be successfully deployed uh, to all regions uh, of the world that can be uh, uh, run, uh, for example, without regression. So even the regression testing is comes to the SRE umbrella. And also automation. Not 
particularly QA automation, like automating the manual uh, steps or uh, manual things that manual QA is doing. Uh, but uh, in general, like uh, if you want to, to perform the same action uh, across uh, all your apps, across uh, all uh, regions, uh, you need to have a pretty good person who can uh, write one script that will have enough, uh, I would say, parameters and branches that will include all the specifications of the different regions, but it will be the same generally uh, whole script for the whole world. Uh, we have technical uh, program managers, so we have project managers, and as that. And uh, yeah, to find all, to find more, you can obviously go to any company careers website and uh, just to take a look at what are the typical requirements. Uh, okay, uh, for the uh, local differences, uh, yeah, the only one that I didn't mention that uh, some locations has a different uh, tax treatment, and uh, just to make sure that uh, if you're going to the uh, like in nowadays uh, world where you can work remotely, and uh, if you are going to be uh, assigned to the office in uh, some uh, state that has a uh, income tax, like stake in income tax, uh, no matter where you're going to work for, you're going to pay these taxes. So just uh, be mindful about these uh, differences. Okay, so talking about the general uh, hiring process. Uh, it comprises of, uh, I would say, two sections. Uh, first one is non-technical session, and second one is technical. Uh, so to be uh, noticed or to be approached uh, uh, by the hiring team, uh, you can do it in uh, three different ways. Uh, one way is uh, definitely uh, have an amazing resume and uh, amazing LinkedIn profile and uh, do the networking and uh, be active and have a lot of uh, views on your uh, LinkedIn page. Uh, we all use uh, recruiting uh, licenses on the LinkedIn and uh, we filter our uh, searches uh, to target, uh, I would say, the, to spread our fishnet among the uh, keywords and uh, the skills and uh, previous experience. So if you are, uh, have qualifying skills and uh, you have the uh, right keywords on your profile, if uh, you have more uh, views by other people, you'll be higher in the search. So just uh, having an active LinkedIn page increases your chances so, to get uh, spotted. Uh, second uh, way, it's uh, more uh, proactive when you're reaching out uh, to the, uh, through the LinkedIn and see the job offering on this platform or go directly to the employer website and to see what they have to offer. Um, the third one, uh, I found uh, it's much more uh, guarantee that uh, you will get the uh, quick response. Because sometimes when you supply, like when you provide your application uh, to the position, you uh, have like a low response rate, maybe between like 10 and 30%, uh, depending on the company. And somebody will, can even reach out to you like six months later saying like, hey, you submitted the application, but you like, I already found the job, not interested anymore. So if you communicate directly with a hiring manager, I would say that uh, at least uh, if you're not qualified or if it's uh, like not now, try again in six months, you will get this response in the uh, like first two weeks. So you can like uh, focus your energy only on the companies that you're interested in. Okay, so the second step, if you have been noticed uh, by the recruitment team, uh, usually ta talent advisor is going to reach out to you. So talent advisor is a person who is working on the uh, hiring team, uh, usually uh, with uh, some HR skills or even the person from the HR department. And uh, they're going to make sure before even transferring you to speak with the hiring manager that uh, you are meeting the minimum requirements that are for this position that you are legally able to work. Uh, it's not going to be discussed a lot of like uh, technical things. Uh, pretty much it's a, I would say that each talent advisor has a list of checkboxes as that they're going to cross out to see like uh, if you have some bachelor degree in some technical field or alternatively you can uh, have like three years of uh, full-time experience in the US. Uh, it will also qualify you at least uh, to pass the talent advisor level. Uh, the reason uh, for this, uh, uh, like I would say the barrier that uh, a lot of people on the LinkedIn are uh, like the click and apply for a job are uh, doing this uh, without even uh, having the basic qualifications. And uh, talent advisors are trying to filter out somebody who clicked by mistake or who didn't realize like what exactly uh, job descriptions means when they say CICD. 
Okay, so if you have been cleared by talent advisor, which uh, should be fine if you're careful and applying to the uh, right positions, uh, you will be uh, moved to the next round, which is uh, communication with the hiring manager. So uh, job of the informational call with hiring manager is uh, for him to uh, understand uh, what is your motivation, uh, why you want to leave your uh, current company, uh, why you uh, want to join this particular company that he's representing, and also deal with some description about uh, the uh, whole company, the department they're working on, uh, their culture, their projects, their technologies. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, this is a round where uh, it will be really nice to come prepare it. So uh, not like uh, learn uh, only like about the person who is uh, uh, going to meet with you, but uh, also about the uh, probably like latest news about the company or latest news about uh, this department that uh, this person is representing. Uh, let's say that a uh, hiring manager as myself are uh, working in cybersecurity, but I'm also working in the Oracle. So if you uh, come uh, with uh, some understanding of uh, either of two and have uh, some questions that you are uh, genuinely interested in, it will drastically increase your chances of uh, passing this round. Again, there is no technical questions on uh, this round, but a uh, uh, hiring manager at least want to see if uh, you are ready to invest your time and you have enough energy to go through the whole process and not drop out uh, in the middle. Uh, so <clears throat> that's about the non-technical portion of the typical hiring process. Uh, the next uh, three steps are going to be uh, the technical ones. So if the hiring manager decided that uh, you worth the effort uh, to interview you, uh, you're going to be assigned to, for the phone screening. Uh, so it's usually a video chat with a coding platform available for both the interviewer and the, the candidate, where they can uh, uh, code in uh, a selection of the candidate uh, programming language. Uh, usually it's uh, like uh, I recommend to, to all the phone screeners on my team to start uh, with uh, like a pyramid approach when you ask uh, on the first level the most basic things to make sure that the candidate is not like uh, turned off right away and then it will be like 60 minutes of like uh, unconscious silence on the call. Uh, so uh, basic uh, uh, approach about the like uh, object to brain programming. Like do you know what is class? Do you know what is inheritance? Maybe uh, you are, um, should be familiar at least to some degree with uh, uh, Terminal, with Linux. Uh, for example, can you name uh, 10 Linux commands and explain how they work, at least to this level. And I would say it's a, uh, it's a good uh, way to uh, warm up the candidate and make sure that we are all speaking at the same uh, pace, you understand each other, and uh, we are working in a very multicultural environment and uh, you need to get used to, well, at least some of us need to get used to the accents, to the way, the way of people are communicating, elaborating their thoughts. So it's a good warm up exercise. Uh, then if it's uh, going good, and I would say that uh, OP concepts uh, or general uh, operation system context, uh, concepts should take around uh, 10 minutes, then we can move to the system design. So let's say that uh, uh, I can ask a candidate before even like coding anything, uh, just in general, like uh, if you have a, a web service like a Dropbox or like a mini version of Twitter, how you're going uh, to organize uh, this data? Like uh, where would you store the uh, pictures? Where would you store the users? If it's going to be the single table or two tables linked to each other, like what will be the primary key? So uh, to understand like if a person uh, can um, come to your project and uh, get the idea what is the difference between the load balancer, between the uh, database, and between the workers that are actually performing the work. And uh, if you're familiar with this uh, concept, uh, I would say that you will not have any troubles passing uh, these uh, questions. Um, then if a candidate has specific uh, like inclinations, he's uh, senior enough uh, to uh, answer the distributed question systems, uh, like uh, how would you design the systems that will handle 1,000 customers? What if uh, one month later, uh, CEO is telling that uh, now we need to support half million customers? How you're going to scale your decisions? And in what areas would you predict that you will have the bottlenecks? At least on the understanding level. And uh, well, I personally ask about the security because uh, in the cybersecurity, I always like 
uh, open to any candidates who has at least some idea about the security, but it's not required. Um, yeah, so after that, uh, after this warm up session, so depending on what is the biggest uh, deepness of the candidate knowledge, we are going to dive in and ask uh, some one or two problems to solve. Uh, usually uh, pretty simple, but uh, again, uh, it uh, works as a pyramid. So uh, the uh, simple and most, face, uh, most uh, straightforward solution might be not the best one because now you uh, start to introduce uh, the candidate with restrictions. So you can say, for example, if your space is limited only to the five megabytes, how you're going to change your solution? Or you want to, to scale up the system to serve millions of customers, how you can implement it in the N square or N one again. And uh, yeah, so pretty much the phone screener will be uh, usually person from the team, approximately on the same level as uh, you are applying to. And uh, if, if everything is uh, good on the phone screen, uh, you moved to, to the next round, which is uh, uh, pre-COVID-19 situation. It was the full day in-person interview. Now we uh, moved fully to the Zoom interviews. So it's going to be the Zoom session of uh, four to five, 60 minutes uh, interviews. Uh, almost all of them will be one-to-one. -one, so you're going definitely to speak with your hiring manager. But now instead of uh, hiring manager talking and uh, explaining about the company, he is going to listen to you. What did you do in the previous job on the previous project? and uh, ask some questions like, uh, um, tell me the situation when you had to disagree with your manager. How did you do it? Uh, what was your actions? What was the result? Like, did you escalate? Did you speak to your manager manager? And so on. Uh, then it will be uh, followed by two or three developers. Uh, it's not going to be the same developer who did the phone screening, but it will be like other uh, guys, most probably from the same team that you're being interviewed into. And uh, in the end, uh, or somewhere in the middle, it will be followed up with a special person uh, that we call bartender in Oracle, which is uh, also called bar raiser in Amazon. Uh, so this is a person who is trying to avoid our natural human biases. So let's say that the whole team is working about like in the security domain and the candidate is coming from the excellent school that is very famous for the security. And uh, they already have an uh, internal predisposition to came to the interview like, hey, this is security guys, we need to hire him, even before we, he start answering any questions. So to avoid this bias, every, uh, I would say, big company has a person from the other department who is trained to ask tricky questions on the behavioral uh, interview part and on the technical part. And he is uh, fully unbiased because he's not hiring for his own team. And uh, he honestly, and like with full heart, want to hire the best candidates uh, because uh, he is an uh, integral part of any interviewing process. Uh, he has much more experience than hiring manager because hiring manager just needs to close the three openings that he has and maybe he needs to interview 15 candidates. The bartender is usually a person who is uh, helping hiring managers on the weekly basis. So they have huge experience across uh, all the type of candidates and they can see if the candidate is a really uh, like nice gem or really strong uh, technical person, or just somebody who is trying to find, uh, uh, to, to grasp as many offers as possible to trade with uh, one of the companies that he's really going into. Uh, so usually after the interview, on the following day, uh, uh, all the participants of the interview are gathered for the debrief, where they're going to discuss uh, what they liked, what they didn't like in the candidate. Uh, in this, uh, area, I would say that hiring manager is looking for the red flags uh, that uh, some engineer would uh, like some developer who was interviewing this person notice that, hey, when I ask about uh, his di distributed system approach, he didn't even understand what is distributed system. And uh, then we have the, like a live chat and somebody else uh, will say that, aha, I also noticed when he was trying to build the uh, like mini version of the Twitter, he didn't realize like uh, if the system will grow, what will break. So they're trying to uh, share their experience and uh, try to dig into the, each other's suspicion that this candidate might not know something. And uh, if there is no red flags and uh, the person uh, did great in some areas and didn't do great in some other areas, it's still a good hire because uh, we can always, uh, like on every project in a uh, uh, big, uh, like any cloud provider, I would say, uh, we have so many uh, things to do that even if uh, among all the things that you're supposed to do, 
you're really great in the 25%, uh, believe me that uh, every experienced manager can assign you to do things in this 25% till end of your career. And it will be really great because you're going to be like niche person, really expert in this domain. And if you have some uh, uh, get knowledge about other things, I'm sure uh, that the professional hiring manager will get somebody who is passionate about that area on the team. And you'll be like working with, with each other, like a good buddies. Everybody is doing the best part that they can do. Uh, okay, so if everything went well and hiring manager is satisfied with performance and uh, with a general, uh, I would say, uh, view of uh, your uh, candidacy and there is no red flags, then uh, we are going to move to the uh, hiring call. And on the hiring call, uh, you will be uh, receiving the call from the manager and uh, uh, you uh, will get uh, to know about uh, uh, the rates, the different uh, uh, positions and uh, what it has to offer. Okay, uh, this is uh, my uh, contact information. Uh, please, uh, I need to move to the another room, so let me move a little bit and uh, uh, share with you. So uh, uh, here's my LinkedIn list, and uh, please uh, uh, feel free to add me to the uh, LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. We have a questions, Sergey. Sure. Yeah, uh, let's. Uh, we'll give you like a couple minutes to move. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, meanwhile, you're doing this, uh, we're gonna get the questions. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, so we, I mean, that was, Great presentation, very, very oh, uh, interesting points and a lot of new things that I did know actually. That, that, that was very useful for, for myself. I really appreciate that. So uh, let's talk about specific, like what are you looking for in the candidate when you are searching, when you do the interview, let's say candidate pass the interview with a, uh, with a, uh, HR manager or like recruiter or whoever. So mm -hmm. what are you looking for in, in the candidate? I would say if the candidate is below senior level, so he has less than three years of full-time experience after college, uh, the biggest thing that I'm looking for is energy. To see if the candidate is uh, motivated to, to try to uh, join the company and motivated to learn uh, new things. Uh, on my uh, interview questions, I usually ask a pretty uh, like a general problem that uh, need to be solved with custom-made tools. Uh, so everybody uh, should be like relaxed and uh, comfortable to understand like uh, how to solve this general problem. But the tools are custom-made, so I would say that uh, you need to carefully read the instruction on each tool to understand how to operate it. And here, what I'm looking for from candidates is a uh, uh, ability to try different things and uh, before start uh, coding anything uh, just to uh, have like a mental picture if uh, it will work out or not and uh, I'm like really enjoying if the candidate is saying to me like oh okay let's apply these two tools and we will get to this one and oh no it's not going to work let me try another way so he's not like uh, just uh, stopping or he knows the answer uh, what I'm looking for I'm looking for like uh, intuition and energy awesome Fair enough. How about the red flags? Question number three. <laughs> yeah, what, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, definitely. For, for the red flags, uh, I would say that uh, it's uh, pretty easy to spot, uh, unfortunately, only after the like, uh, fifth step of the process, when we have uh, invested enough time and uh, I ask my engineers to speak with the candidate. Sometimes you see that the candidate is not truly want uh, this position, that uh, he's just checking out. Mm -hmm. Uh, or if the person is saying that uh, he is aware about uh, this situation, uh, or this technology, and uh, he knows like uh, what he needs to do uh, and how to operate the tools, but when you ask him to operate, he uh, starts to to swim around and uh, not exactly uh, provide the answers, uh, showing that he has this experience. So I would say the red flag for me it's a. Uh, 
um, overestimating your own um, technical skills. Uh, it's fine to overestimate uh, your uh, desire and energy. So let's say that uh, if you're saying that uh, uh, I didn't work with AWS, but I uh, know that I can do it and I can learn it, that's fine. Uh, on the other hand, if you're saying that uh, um, I, I'm familiar with uh, JMeter, and uh, if uh, somebody on your team uh, has experience with JMeter, we usually ask candidates uh, some like, uh, simple questions about the JMeter. So I would say that the red flag, don't overestimate your technical skills, but uh, do uh, show the energy that you are willing to learn new things. That's a good explanation, actually. I never heard about it, but yeah, that's uh, totally, totally agree with that. Um, don't try to push it in, like with the technical part, but uh, show the show show your desire, basically, right? Yep. Uh, you brought another actually good point. I mean, interesting point about uh, if the person, I mean, is not truly want this position. I mean, l l let's take um, let's take this case. For example, the person is going through the interview to interview, right? And mm -hmm. obviously, like he should show them uh, like to any interview to any uh, manager that he is actually looking for this job, right? Yep. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Basically, the, that's that's an interesting point. That's an interesting point because, yeah, I, I saw like people going through, from interview and interview and their level of energy actually getting low because they get tired as well. Um, yeah, and also when you're coming to the company, like, if it's your like fourth company on the same week and you're, you're going like from round to round, you either don't have time to prepare or you don't remember what you learned about this company. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it's like a, like most, probably not a red flag, but yellow flag, at least that the candidate uh, don't have a passion to separate his uh, interviews, uh, like one interview per week. Mm -hmm. It's totally yeah. fine if you're passively looking and uh, on the next two months you want to get uh, eight offers. Just do it. What I'm looking for is dedication 100% at least when you're interviewing with us. Yep, yep, agree, agree. All right, let's go with the question number two. Uh, can you share with your favorite uh, questions? Uh, I would say that uh, the most interesting uh, for me is not on the technical side, because uh, I trust uh, that uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, team members in, in my team who is doing excellent technical interviews. Uh, but uh, the most interesting uh, for me is to ask uh, behavioral questions. So usually when I uh, ask candidates, uh, I'm um, asking them uh, to go out of the box and to see some examples of where they uh, contributed more than it was expected from them. Um, let's say that uh, I'm asking, like, uh, tell me about the time when uh, you did not have uh, the, uh, like, prerequisites that uh, is uh, needed to, to do your job. So let's say that somebody is asking you to um, test uh, the better version website of the program, or like, of, of some company. And unfortunately, they ask you on uh, Friday evening, or they're from different locations, it's, it's already weekend. And they forget to provide you with credentials, with a login and email, uh, with a uh, email and password. So I would say that uh, if the person is uh, energetic, he should be able even to provide, like to, to pre-register if it's uh, open beta for everybody, to go and register like he's uh, using his own account, his own email. If the credit card is required, I would say that uh, Probably you should in, you should input uh, the credit card and get it charged to use the service because for sure you're working for this company and you'll get it reimbursed. Uh, but uh, some people, I would say, they follow the rules and like uh, I need to test. Uh, I have a link. I don't have credentials. Let me wait for next Monday to ask credentials. Nice, nice, awesome, awesome. All right, uh, you partially covered this, uh, but uh, can you share like your opinion about resume tips? Like what would you suggest uh, 
how the resume should look like, maybe the length or, and like about the specific. Yeah, uh, so it's a very good question. I would say that hiring managers usually uh, get the resume after initial uh, uh, glimpse on the resume through the talent advisor. So uh, obviously, like we are not the best professionals to understand who is uh, eligible to work, who is not eligible, and you cannot say it by resume. So somebody else has already uh, take a look from the legal perspective. If you're good to go, uh, when you're looking on the resume on the technical perspective, I would say that uh, usually hiring managers. Uh, unfortunately have between five and 10 seconds to look for your resume. Um, obviously uh, we are all humans and uh, we are catching uh, the bullet points and numbers the best. So if you have been working on the previous company or your current company that you are living and you have been a uh, key uh, employee on this project, if you can write in the bullet points, uh, usually three bullet points is the best. Uh, what exactly did you do? So for example, I'm redesigned the test report. I make sure that uh, our users are using the test environment and pre-production environment uh, with uh, the same speed. And I improved uh, the test coverage by 33%. This is like the three key points that, is a that every person should be able to read in about a couple of seconds. Uh, just by scanning uh, the list and uh, make some judgment that at least this person, there is no guarantee that he actually did it, but at least he is able to represent the data, his uh, view of the situation, that he achieved these results and it's easy to read in the fast way. And uh, yeah, so I would say that resume is uh, not the biggest thing as uh, your LinkedIn profile. Uh, because uh, all resumes uh, that are coming like in the PDF or in the uh, uh, Word uh, uh, format are not searchable. So you cannot compare a candidate to candidate side by side if you have two different PDFs. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have uh, like uh, some statements and uh, uh, some uh, like LinkedIn uh, references, uh, the number of months, number of years you worked in total, uh, what the uh, degrees, I would uh, honestly focus more on the LinkedIn to get uh, through the first like initial phases. And uh, then later on, even if you have not ideal resume, you can explain uh, on the like one-to-one -one talk in this hiring manager. Awesome, awesome. All right, Sergey. Uh, that was very useful, interesting session. Cool. Can say, 